Welcome everyone, I'm your host Taz Weatherly. Time is precious and news is breaking, so let's dive in. Just three months in and 2022 is already seeing record home prices. According to Realtor.com's monthly trends report, the U.S. median home price shot up to a record high of $392,000 in February and looks to stay hot even as home inventory shows signs of improving. Pandemics, global conflict, interest rate hikes? So far, nothing has slowed down the market. But I'm sure in 2022, we will see more surprises in store. And as the saying goes, may you live in interesting times. Speaking of that global conflict, there is now increasing concern that the Russian war in Ukraine could have surprisingly far-reaching financial consequences for the United States. Yup, even in the housing market. According to Redfin Deputy Chief Economist Taylor Marr, the conflict and resulting economic uncertainty is likely to impact the U.S. market in several key ways. Stock market uncertainty, the rising gas prices, and potential price gouging are all pain points for the U.S. buyer. While Real Estate with Taz hasn't yet added a foreign correspondent, you can rest assured that we will be Google translating any critical developments as they relate to buying and selling. Finally today, we turn our investigative eyes towards a growing trend for big money investors, the suburbs, or to be more specific, private equity groups buying up huge numbers of single family homes. All across the United States, the dream of home ownership is in the midst of a hostile takeover. That's right, the wolves of Wall Street are coming to the cul-de-sac. Let's turn to our senior financial correspondent, Casual Taz Weatherly, to find out if this trend is the next big thing or another big short. Right now, big financial hedge funds are actually buying up subdivisions in bulk. And I, I'm surprised that this isn't getting a lot more traction than it is. Like, I don't know any realtors that are talking about this. So we're gonna talk about it because this is absolutely concerning um, in a number of ways because first and foremost, I feel it kind of defeats the purpose of the American dream. The American dream has always been about home ownership, owning your house, not renting or anything like that. And as housing, is in high demand and these hedge funds keep buying it, that limits the ability of people to actually live the American dream, right? Because instead of those homes going to the regular you and me home buyer type of people, now they're going to financial institutions that then dictate when that's gonna be sold, who gets to own it. A number of different things that it just takes out the general consumer. It's already challenging for buyers to buy as it is. So on top of rates, now we have big financial institutions that are buying homes in bulk that are making homes more scarce to buy. Like there's a lot of things going on here that this is concerning because there aren't any rules and regulations either. I think that's something to say. And that's a double-edged sword when you think about it because when you start implementing more rules and regulations, then it gets under such scrutiny to where like there's no flexibility. That's why personally I'm all about the free market. But speaking of the free market, real estate has always been a free market. And, you know, having instances like this where big institutions are buying suburbs in bulk will then lead to more regulation. Is that something we want to see in the housing market? And arguably, personally, that answer is no, because I then see this as like, are we going to start dictating how much homes can be sold for at this point to make it more competitive? I don't know. Are there going to be certain limits within subdivisions of who owns what? I don't know. Like. A lot of this, if it's not talked about, I think, I, there's nothing to manage yet. But the conversations need to start happening of, hey, what does this look like in the next 5, 10, 15 years? Because right now, for monetary gain, if you're one of these hedge fund people, like, heck yeah, I can see how that's a value to you. But what are the long-term implications of this, not only to the housing market, but most importantly, to buyers of real estate. I think that this is a story that is going to unfold in not only in 2022, but in years to come. And it's something that needs to be talked about now. If we go down this route and how fast we go down this route, what does the American dream look like in the next five years? And I have no freaking idea and only time will tell. So stay tuned on this story because it's gonna be a good one as it unfolds. Wow, 
Thanks, Taz. That was some hard-hitting stuff. And with that said, I'm your host, Taz Weatherly, and I'll catch you on the next one.